Uh, Marilyn, as I mentioned earlier, you got three hawks and a dove. None of the names necessarily surprising. How do you think the ECB handles this next week? That's right. So we have seen increasingly um, hawkish rhetoric from um, <laughs> the people exactly that you would expect, mm -hmm. such as uh, Jens Weidmann. But I think going into next week, I think it is finely balanced. We only recently had the results of the review of the strategy where they have um, essentially increased the bar for raising interest rates itself. So they now have their symmetric 2% target. In terms of the asset purchase program and potentially tapering that, I think next week it will be finely balanced. Um, on balance, perhaps they might wait for a slightly later in the year, given although we have seen financial conditions uh, improve over the past few months, we are also seeing, you know, the uncertainty around the uh, Delta variant of the mm -hmm. virus uh, and other things. And, you know, maybe in terms of consistency of messaging, they might wait a little bit. Also in December, we will get the announcement around the future of the pandemic emergency um, purchase program. So, but I do think we are getting there in terms of announcing some form of taper, whether we get a small signal next week or whether they wait until, uh, you know, towards the end of the year it remains to be seen. But mm -hmm. I certainly think that we are well, edging there in terms of tapering. Marilyn, let's, let's break down that PEP question because what I found interesting mm -hmm. when we heard the Hawks talk was not that they were hawkish, but that yesterday at least you had Klaus Knott as well as uh, Robert Holzman saying that maybe we're not going to have that flexibility in the PEP program with the APP program, mm -hmm. so the traditional asset purchase program. The rhetoric is that we may have the flexibility. If we have it, that will be very dovish. If we don't, that will be more hawkish. Do we know yet what the committee is really thinking? I think it's very hard to tell. As you said earlier, when you have such a diverse group of countries and economies, it's very, very difficult to um, really figure out right now where they will you know, form a consensus. Um, I think... On balance, though, um, you can certainly see that Germany, for example, we saw the disappointing retail sales, for example, and I think certainly inflation has some role in that. So they are obviously very concerned around the role of inflation. Uh, we're not seeing the same wage pressure in Germany as, um, you know, as elsewhere. And so I do think it is of a big concern to them. And I do think that, you know, it's hard to see what the consensus will be. Mm -hmm. But I do think in terms of PEP, we are edging towards tapering, maybe towards the end of the year. Um, when it comes to the market, yesterday I called it a mini taper tantrum. Other people were telling me it's not even a taper tickle. What did you make of the move in bonds? Um, I, I think it's as you would expect as you get to these sort of key points, both in terms of the U.S., where we're starting to think more about tapering there, and uh, in, in Europe as well, where we're starting to consider it there too. I think it's just we're at this inflection point where now the market is starting to position itself for maybe a gradual withdrawal of this incredibly loose monetary policy. So you know, you'd expect to see a little bit more volatility and a little bit of more movement mm -hmm. as the market starts to position itself for these big changes from what has been this exceptionally loose supportive well, monetary policy. And we're in a position, I do think, that we can start to move away from that now. Well, Marilyn, in the U.S., it really feels like the Powell has forecasted how he's going to avoid that by basically saying, mm -hmm. we can taper. And once we're done tapering, that doesn't mean that we necessarily have to have a rate hike. By separating them quite a bit, really controlling the front mm -hmm. end of the curve, controlling those expectations, basically tamping down that bond market volatility, the ECB hasn't been able to separate those two yet. If we do see some kind of tantrum, is it going to be in European fixed income? I think it's hard to see. So as you say, Powell has done a very, very good job of uh, really trying to separate, um, you know, t tapering from the asset purchase program and then potentially raising rates at some later stage. I think for the ECB, the expectations for any form of rate rise are really pretty distant. Mm -hmm. And I think, as I said, they have set the bar very, very high in terms of wanting inflation to be within the forecast horizon um, at 2% or higher. And so I think they've set the bar incredibly high, particularly as we do expect the inflationary forces to be transitory, and we do expect it to, to roll over potentially going into next year as well. So while the ECB haven't exactly separated the two in the same way that Powell has, I do think that they have set the bar for raising rates much higher. And mm -hmm. so I think we can start to see that there is as well a sort of a real differentiation between those two steps of policy as well. So do you buy the dip in fixed income in Europe then? Is that the right trade? Um, so I think we would gradually expect yields to continue to, to, to rise. As we do see the economies continue to improve, as we see um, you know, a reduction in the restrictions around mobility, as we do start to see, hopefully, supply start to catch up with some of the demand 
I think it's hard to say um, by the dip because I do think we will continue to see yields rise further. And so I think really we're looking more at on a case by case basis. Where can you get yield? Where can you get the carry that we're looking for in your portfolio? Where mm -hmm. can you get the liquidity? And I think really it's more about having a very, very balanced portfolio and being very cognizant of the fact that rates might continue to sort of tickle higher as we go into the year end. All right, so Marilyn, where do you get that yield? So in parts of emerging markets, we're certainly seeing some, some decent carry. Uh, we're also seeing it in parts of the investment grade and high yield um, corporate bond sector. Again, I think it really is at the moment looking on a bottom up perspective at those companies that have a very strong cash flow and that you know are really positioned for future growth um, you know, in a, a multi-year um, horizon. We continue to like some areas of technology, for example. Um, and then, you know, in Europe, we do like um, some, some of the sort of lower down the capital structure bonds. Um, and I think really those where we really expect to continue to improve as we come out of this crisis and as we do see things improving in terms of the economies continuing to open up further.